Hi, this is Bob from Turbot. If you're looking for a quick demo of Turbot Guardrails features, you're in the right spot. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to show how you connect your Kubernetes clusters directly to your Turbot Guardrails workspace. Adding your clusters will help you sit them right alongside your Amazon, Azure, Google, and ServiceNow workloads so that you can manage your security posture as well as your operational best practice controls right in the same console and the same experience. So to get started, you would have already installed the Kubernetes mod. And once you have done so, on your connect screen, you'll have another scope called Kubernetes cluster that then you can associate to Turbot guardrails. And so here in this example, I'm gonna bring in a Kubernetes cluster into my Acme organization. And in the console here, it automatically generates a, a script that you can then run with kubectl and Helm to deploy, but this is just an example. Uh, one of the main things here is getting the enrollment secret, which you can also generate from the API. Uh, but you could take this script as at least as a starting point of getting started. You can then derive it into your own uh, deployment mechanisms. Uh, but what this will do is actually install Turbot guardrails into your Kubernetes uh, in as a pod. And so it's going to set up the, the configurations that will then be able to, to talk into your cluster and then back out to Turbot guardrails for any of the configuration changes that are occurring. Now, I've already connected uh, one, of my, uh, one of my clusters. And so I'm just going to head over to the folder structure I added it. And so here I have a Kubernetes cluster called Wonderful Sculpture, uh, automatically named by EKS. Um, and you know, as a, a footnote, you can connect any Kubernetes cluster, whether it's in like Amazon uh, Elastic uh, Kubernetes uh, service or in the AW, in the Azure Kubernetes service or the Google uh, Kubernetes engine, GKE, uh, or on-prem and any related services or local to your own machine. Does not matter. Wherever your Kubernetes cluster lives, uh, you can deploy those guardrail configurations into your cluster, which then it can talk to your Turbot guardrails workspace. Once you have that set up, Guardrails is going to look and feel very similar, just as if you connected an Amazon account, an Azure subscription, or Google project. Your resources will then be discovered, automatically added. If you have any existing policies that are set up, you will then see those alerts come through. So as an example, one of the security policies that I had set up was that for any of my deployments, I wanted to make sure that there's no uh, privileged access that's enabled. So as an example, uh, here in my default namespace, I deployed an Nginx uh, deployment. And within that deployment, uh, I have a few replicas that are set up. Uh, but within that deployment, uh, there was a configuration here for the security context to be privilege equals true. Now, what that is, is a security implication that allows for uh, those uh, deployments and the related resources to have full access inside your Kubernetes cluster. And so as a standard best practice is not to have this enabled. Uh, and only in, in rare circumstances. And so the two alerts that I have here within my, my deployment, uh, so here uh, within my deployment here, I have an alert that is looking at that configuration had automatically alerted once I added my cluster uh, that I do have deployment containers that do have privilege access enabled. Now, similarly, it's not just security controls within guardrails, you can manage any type of configuration. And so guardrails can track those configurations whether it be from a security, compliance, operational, or cost control standpoint. So here in my replica set, I have three replicas uh, that are uh, associated. So uh, here I have replicas equals three. And generally, from a, a configuration standpoint, uh, all the replica set configurations are in a proof state. One of the things I can do is enforce a change. Turbot will track that change and then automatically uh, discover the, that if there's any misconfigurations on that resource. Very similar to Amazon, Azure, Google, ServiceNow, et cetera. And so to cause a change in the environment, I'm just going to come back here, my Nginx deployment, and I'm going to uh, update the replicas. Instead of a three, I'm going to bring this down to one. Hit save. And then I'm going to deploy. Okay, great. Now, coming back to my console here, just like any other change within a cloud environment, 
guardrails is going to immediately pick up any changes. So here I have the replica set uh, that was updated. I can see here that the change went from a replica of three down to one, and then it changed some other related configurations. And I refresh the screen here, and now the replica set is showing that I have one replica, uh, and it's not meeting the minimum requirement of two. Now that immediately alerts in the Turbo console, and so, uh, but you can also subscribe to those notifications through uh, Slack, Team, uh, email, or really any other endpoint, you can ship those notifications and then subscribe to them through other, uh, through other types of channels. And so as an example, this particular configuration uh, was alerted in my Slack channel. So earlier that Kubernetes uh, deployment approved control had already uh, alarmed and uh, alerted that I had the privilege access in the deployments. Uh, and then now recently with my change, a new notification was then shipped saying that I'm not meeting my minimum size requirement for the replica set. If you feel that your organization would benefit from Turbot guardrails, we would love to talk. Please reach out to us at turbot.com guardrails and more information is in the video description below.